Okay, um, so the other night I was testing out um, some streaming software that was recommended to me. Um, it's called OBS and a lot of people use it. And um, I spent a lot of time kind of calibrating it to optimize it for my system and da da da. Uh, and I ended up really not liking it. Um, so I'm back to using sort of this like trial version of uh, a paid program. I feel like I should just stop talking until this music is over because to me it's really loud. Uh, so I'll just say some things that don't matter. Like, today is the last day that I have an excuse to not ever show my face because I'm getting my first discrete standalone webcam um, so that I can do more of this uh, just time-wasting bullshit um, but now with, like, my face very close to your face. So, that's exciting, um, and it means I'll have to, like, actually wash my hair once in a while. Um, so really it's for, it's for the grooming factor. Because um, before this I was always, like, a Macintosh fuckboy who, you know, there would always just be a little hole looking at you, and you would use it for photo booth and you would use photo booth as a mirror that could capture pictures of you naked from further away. So that's basically what that was for. But now I have, I'm gonna get, um, I think it's coming from Amazon today, uh, it'll probably take me like a month to set up properly. But anyway, this is like my goodbye to only my voice uh, video. But also, as a test for OBS the other night, it was like 4 in the morning, I decided to uh, just go through my backpack because I had been playing all day and I really didn't want to play anymore. And I knew that nothing interesting was going to happen if I did go out and try to frag somebody. Like, the only thing that would happen is that I would die. Uh, and probably not even spectacularly. Um, so I started going through my backpack. I'm just trying to figure it. And smoking while doing this, I think, is also something that I'm not going to be allowed to do anymore because nobody likes watching other people smoke. Um, so I kind of feel like I'm not going to be allowed to ever smoke in front of you guys again. Oh, here comes the music. It's going to end. Thank the Lord. Okay, I literally couldn't hear my own voice and um, the system volumes on mi uh, minimum. So, uh, well, first of all, okay, so um, it is December something. I don't know the date, um, but it's mid-December 2015. Uh, we are on the cusp of a bright and beautiful new year. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on in the game that came with the, I guess, a Christmas update, um, or as far as I can tell, like, the update is that there's, you know, little Christmas lights attached to everything, including uh, stock maps, custom maps, um, grappling hooks, and these boxes that are taking up an entire row in my inventory that I'm not allowed to look at or touch. Uh, so that was kind of like the Christmassy Christmas update. Um, oh, and also you, you get one of these, which I think during the year, like you can only use it once before it uh, disintegrates or explodes or something. But while it's Christmas time, you can press your action key, which um, should be bound to H uh, if you're using the default uh, configurations. Um, you hit H and you like fart out a cloud of um, just really pretty snow particles and kind of like, I think there's like a jingling noise, or I might have imagined that part. Um, uh, I, I get a little just like manic and even more ADD than I am when I'm playing, so sometimes I make things up, but I'm pretty sure there's a jingling noise and definitely like a puff of beautiful snow that's um, coming out of sort of like your ass area. Uh, and the best part is that you can hit H while you're taunting. Um, at any point, and it'll release another um, Christmassy 
cloud of uh, snow, flurry of snow. Um, so then I keep like getting these randomly as a drop and uh, so what I learned, um, I'll probably reiterate this late, reiterate this later uh, when I'm sounding ignorant about something else, but um, I just want to point out that I've been playing TF2 for well under a year. Um, I would say I probably started about five or six months ago, and I've already logged uh, 1,300 hours, but a lot of those hours were spent in like complete ignorance and confusion. Uh, I didn't start like reading up on uh, what various weapons could do. Like I literally didn't understand the concept of a mini sentry for like a good three months. Um, and but I mean it's like been an incredibly fun and frustrating. Uh, but never demoralizing experience. Um, I have definitely rage quit a few times and I have no shame in rage quitting. Uh, like sometimes you just need to get the fuck out of there before your head explodes. Um, and like that sometimes is often like every day for me, but that's just a process. It's part of the process. Um, but anyway, so the other night I made a recording pretty much like this, but maybe a little less verbose because it was four in the morning and I hadn't really thought about anything I was saying beforehand. I actually didn't even know I was recording because um, OBS, unlike the software I'm using now, has zero support for uh, an in-game overlay that lets you know that you are live. Um, right now I'm looking at an overlay, like a tiny corner of my screen that says live and it tells me when it's buffering, it tells me when it's uh, dropping in resolution or frame rate, um, it lets me know about my delay, I get notifications if someone messages me on Twitch, which doesn't happen, and again, this, this stream has been like on and off live for about three days, <laughs> and I've deleted all the broadcasts and just made like really short highlights of everything. I'm drinking um, some really disgusting iced tea because like the worst thing is that smacking noise when your mouth is too close to the microphone and you're also either nervous or just have a gross mouth and it's just like that sound um, and like literally my first goal when I first started my radio program um, at Brown I didn't go to Brown, I went to the school next to Brown, but at Brown University they have a community radio program. So I did that for three years and uh, like my goal was not to, you know, curate amazing music or anything. It was literally just to, to practice my enunciation and my diction and to stop popping my peas into the microphone and to never smack my lips, um, which is, I, they were low standards and they were met um, and surpassed somewhat. Uh, so anyway, um, I guess I'll get started. Uh, before I had um, my backpack, oh, and I accidentally deleted the broadcast, um, which is why I just thought I would do this again because a lot of things came up that weren't really about the items themselves, but kind of just how I feel about TF2 and gameplay in general. Um, and I had it arranged by uh, date to show you guys the newer stuff, but I'm literally going to go through 15 pages of um, just all this shit that's not real uh, that I still have like actual human emotions for so if you guys want to just not watch it or listen to it that is fine um, so I'll just start with easy stuff um, I, these boxes are just, whatever um, we'll ignore the boxes they're just taking up space right now but I'm sure something cute will erupt out of it on Christmas morning and since I am not going home for Christmas for one of the first times in my life, might be the second time, uh, it'll be nice to have 10 boxes that don't exist give me stuff that I probably already have. Um, but I know a lot of you guys are probably curious about these taunts that are so far. <laughs> So far, they're, they're like, you can buy them from the store, um, and generally later on, um, all taunts come down a lot in price or can be uh, traded for. But so this is the Buck and Bronco, and in in game there's an actual mechanical bolt under him, and uh, but he still looks just as ridiculous. And that's loud, so I'm gonna, well I'll show you that. 
And then I'll do that. <laughs> and it will keep making sounds until it's over. Okay. And I think you guys can probably find information about these other taunts. And I don't, that's not really why I wanted to do this. But I'll show you the other two new ones because one of them is just so funny and also so stupid that I kind of feel like almost that it shouldn't exist but also that it's like the only taunt I ever want to do so I um right now I only have it equipped uh for a scout because I just haven't taken the time to update my loadouts other than like switch out a couple of weapons so I'll show you him first but every class has a, a different animation um and I don't think there's actually sound aside from the voice lines in the this preview here, but uh, there's actually this very kind of like funky 80s spandex crotch workout music. Come on, I'm flying. So you start off with um. What stuff? Excuse me. Um, I'm gonna just be chain smoking and drinking this awful tea while I make this video. Um. So you start off with some moves. And then you go, and it's static. You can't really move or do anything during the opening period. Uh, and then you start kind of running in place, and then just like the uh, um, the Kozovsky kick, uh, you know, the Russian dance, um, you can start to move or you can dance in place. And they got some cute little voice lines, and... They do their their funny things, like you know how the sniper is like always a serious guy, but like once in a while he gets like real jazzy, kind of gets down. And the demo has like a thing with shaking his booty, like you know when you equip what is it the sticky launcher or something. He does a little like squeak squeak, um, little ass taunt. Uh, the medic, I kind of just want to talk about him as a character, but maybe a little later. The heavy for me is the most boring tons. Um, he's like lovable, but I mean, all he ever says is all of you are dancing babies. Um, I like when he has a bird head. He's got some funny lines. Uh, Pyro, I think, is always just um, ranks up there with Scout in terms of looking adorable. Uh, and... I mean, this, I this guy, he, he like sneak in a little kind of fan shout out with the little crab move. Um, and, then, and then this happens um, pretty much infinitely until you end it. So that is the second taunt. I think they're all like five or seven dollars or something. Um, in a while, Crocodile, you'll be able to probably get it for like three or four dollars so um, if you're not a big old dummy like me um, you'll either trade some, some some metal for it or some keys or just wait until the price comes down um, and this is the last one I remember seeing this in the workshop I think um, the noise is so god-awful that I kind of almost don't want to play it but I will So I guess that goes along with the whole um, oft-repeated joke that he is a raging alcoholic, which like after a while becomes not funny. Um, and those are, it's one of two character traits uh, that I actually, I mean, I don't really have strong feelings about the characters, the mercenaries themselves. Um, but I, I do have like, I notice things and I have, you know, reactions. Uh, that maybe some others may not. Um, number one being that like alcoholism uh, in real life uh, is like so unfunny. Like if you've ever had like an alcoholic boyfriend, it's the worst. Um, it will make you want to kill yourself every day. And I can't really even imagine being the alcoholic because um, I, I don't drink and I can't drink. Uh, I used to drink, um, but I've never really liked it. Uh, and because I know a couple of 12 and 13 year olds do watch this, um, 
alcohol really just i mean just just try it a couple times in high school and then give it up like you, you will look like a dumbass when you get wasted and then like have like one beer on your 21st birthday that's what i did um let's see here's a bunch of crap that i don't use um you can see that like almost like half of my items that are not reskins or uh very like limited items that would be expensive if I got them in any other format than um, than just regular quality uh, are strange, and um, I am not like a person who is lucky and just like got a lot of strange drops. Um, and this is like not advice, but this is just how I feel about um, stock weapons um, and uh, drop and craft weapons. Uh, that are basically like the core weapons in the game. Um, I think that at some point uh, it's important for you to uh, invest in just a strange version of that weapon that tracks your stats for you. And that has nothing to do with, you know, getting a higher quality item or anything like that. Um, it's not like in the same vein of people wanting unusuals or like genuine versions of things. Um, it has more to do with, uh, I guess, um, reflecting on your, your own gameplay uh, and being able to sort of uh, see trends. Um, I got kind of freaked out because like someone came and watched the stream for like a minute, but they're gone now. So I think we're alone now. <laughs> Um, and mainly I'm just going to turn this into a video later and get rid of the broadcast anyway, so, um, but anyway, yeah, like the, uh, just like one basic piece of advice that I would give and, uh, like the only really sector in the world of TF2 that I feel, uh, comfortable giving advice in is that it's important to be aware of, uh, basically how many people you've demolished using different weapons um, because it teaches you first of all to diversify um, if you have a strange weapon in your inventory that you've had for a while and you have zero kills on it maybe you should try it out um, because some people may disagree but I really feel like the weapon system um, as it stood like three days ago before this massive uh, tweak that happened. Um, I think the weapons are all just really nicely balanced against each other and can be um, countered by other specific weapons um, or classes, and I think it's important to try out all of them, which is why I will play Sniper and I will play Soldier and I will play Heavy even though I don't enjoy um, really any, anything about like how they move or their job uh, or their place in the scheme of like a match um, but uh, yeah and you can see like what your weaknesses are to an extent um, you can see if you maybe cling to just one mode of uh, playing uh, for instance okay this like most of my strange weapons only have like below 50 but um I got this one like maybe a month ago. I have uh, 800 kills on it, which is not even really that much considering how much I play Pyro and how much I loved my degreaser before I got this version um, very recently. Uh, and it kind of just tells me that I um, I don't like main Pyro. I don't really like saying that, but uh, I rely on this weapon a lot. Um, and I think that in order to understand how to kill other people, you need to play as those classes as well um, in order to kind of understand better how to counter them. Um, so yeah, that's the reason why most of my like uh, core items have strange stats, stat module attached to it. Um, I try to replace almost everything with a strange version and then the rest is more of like a cosmetic type of thing you know like getting the kill streaks um, I have to say that it is very rare for me to get more than like get five kills or more so professional kill streaks are like not really a thing that I need or care about 
but I like things to be shiny, so a lot of my items are strange, especially as kill streak. Um, and I even I even want my jar of pee to count how many times I've thrown the pee on people. When it's Christmas, I want Christmas pee. Um, and especially my spy items because it's like such a big thing when I actually manage to land a fucking backstab. Um, I need to have strange versions of all of those so that I can look back at the numbers and feel proud that at some point in time I actually managed to trick someone into turning around so that I could uh, just kill them in the most satisfying way possible. Um, so I think we're hitting our first round of um, the new collection of items. Uh, and this is, um, since the gunmetal update, which happened, I think, in 2015 too, uh, earlier on, I think, um, the idea of reskinning happened. Um, and I haven't been around for all the, like, weapon nerfs and buffs and introductions and all of that. Um, but I read up a lot on, you know, like, the history of weapons and um, what the original, like, beta version was and um, how things have changed over the years. Uh, and I feel like the concept of reskinning outside of a couple of, um, like, promotional tie-in items has never been a thing. And that's something that, like, makes, um, I don't know, the world of TF2 items really wonderful and um, I've never really been embarrassed to open my backpack in front of anybody else. Um, but now with the addition of um, reskinning stock weapons, uh, it kind of introduces um, things that like other uh, like pay to win or like DLC games have kind of been um, profiting off of for a long time, which is that now you can have like 10 of the exact same item with the exact same stats that just have different colored pixels on them. Um, but I mean, I went all out and got all of the spy knives, which um, they didn't cover cover those in gunmetal, but um, this new contract campaign is called uh, Tough Break, which is kind of a stupid fucking name. Um, but I mean, their items are a lot more attractive to, to me, um, and I think are better, better skinned. Um, Gunmetal was like all about camouflage um, and as well as like just neon blobs, like very 80s kind of just like explosion, um, really vomitous kind of patterning. Um, and they were also very flat and didn't really take into account that they were skinning 3D items that reflected light in a reflective world. Um, and they took a lot more time to actually replicate different materials um, for these. So these are all exactly um, the same. I'll just show them to you for people who are curious. Um, but I mean, you can go look it up. This isn't very interesting for me to show you. Other than that, like to repeat myself, that they did a much better job of thinking about real world materials and making them at least realistic enough that you can kind of imagine like the haptic experience you would have, like the touch sensation, um, you know, on different parts of the grip and things like that. Um, and, and like they say, the stock loadout is generally like objectively the best, um, unless you're in a very specialized situation. So I understand for various reasons why they are only reskinning stock weapons for, for both campaigns. The other being that um, what we consider to be pretty basic weapons are actually often um, achievement only uh, weapons or random drop weapons or weapons that only come in specific crates. So I understand why there's like not an ambassador skin, but I would really like to see an ambassador skin. Um, and then like going along with uh, my comment on replacing your basic items with strange uh, trackers. Um, it also tells me like things that I need to try out more, like just to see, just for fun. I replaced these guys like a couple weeks ago. I already have 126 um, instances of drinking the bonk, trying to confuse sentries or just get behind the enemy. Um, and I've uh, 
partake in, in the Criticola exactly once. Um, so I know that I need to work on, uh, like I just don't drink it because I'm too afraid to drink it close to the enemy. And by the time I get um, close enough to land a few good shots, like a few good mid shots, um, the crits have worn off. So I just kind of don't bother. So I know that I need to work on uh, the timing and all of that. And then this guy um, is probably one of the worst items in the game, in my opinion. Um, it's just the stupidest thing. Like, it, it takes forever to eat. Um, you look dumb eating it, uh, and I did not buy this or replace this. It just dropped. I got it. I, they dropped a strange uh, chocolate spelled backwards um, bar. Um, here's some festive whatever. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with all of these. Um, I really like playing medic, so it's especially important for me to have uh, trackers on these, and I have uh, additional stat trackers as well that you can buy, um, like strange parts or modules, I forget what they're called. Uh, I have kill assists, um, kill assists, kill assists. <laughs> uh, and I think it's the Crits Creek that strangely um, was so limited in crate drops that it's actually like insanely expensive to find a strange version. And I try to make it a rule not to spend uh, too much money on items for this game. Uh, so I just, I'm never gonna have a strange Crits Creek, um, but I also just don't use it very much because I tend to pop it right when we're hitting like a choke point of sentries and everyone knows that the crits does absolutely shit all for um, trying to take down you know like an engine nest or something it's really just good for uh, really tightly populated areas of people um, and there's some great videos online of uh, the enemy not understanding how the righteous bison works and backing away from a crits soldier who is using the bison and just decimating themselves because um, as far as I know the damage does the opposite of fall off so the more you retreat from uh, the ray uh, the more damage you take because you're essentially following the trajectory and exposing yourself to the damage uh, continuously <laughs> so um, these are two items from gunmetal that I either want in a contract or I just bought them because I do that, um, and I think that they're really ugly. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they're really hideous. Um, so the newer um, items that came out appeal to me like on a variety of levels. Um, why are there two people watching this? I'm really just going through my shit, but um, hi. So, I mean, not to like get political, and so I won't, but uh, aside from the uh, ambiguously gay and or female pyro, um, the entire uh, team of mercs, they're all, they're all men. Uh, I know they briefly thought about making the scout a girl, which would have been um, kind of fun, I guess, or... Uh, someone else has mentioned you know developing just a female variant on every character um and literally the only reason that i'm interested in overwatch uh the new the new game that's coming out from blizzard um is because you have the option to play female characters um that you can't in this game so as stereotypical as the rainbows and the flowers and the pastel colors and all that are I also really enjoy the fact that um, the demo can have this, and I feel like he needs it, and I feel like um, maybe he'll drink less if he uses this instead of uh, this. <laughs> uh, this is also really ugly, yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, so I feel like um, ever since reskins were introduced this year, uh, TF2 has kind of fallen a little bit in terms of um, opening the doors for kind of hoarding and um, collecting for the wrong reasons. And you can see that I have like a million pistols and revolvers. Um, I don't collect everything from everything, but like the Spy's revolver, I think is just really aesthetically pleasing. And um, the shape is like really conducive to 
I don't know, like texturing and um, reflectivity and all of that stuff. And the pistol is just nice because it's a multi-class weapon. And like the engineer, he's he's a person. He wants to, you know, have some fun and look good some days. And then the third item I would say is a scatter gun. I have every single scatter gun that's ever happened. Um, I don't know why. Like I consider the scout to be my Barbie. Um, I've mentioned this elsewhere, but uh, I don't shop for myself. Uh, I moved here with a, uh, a package of Hanes underwear and a package of Hanes men's t-shirts. Um, one pair of flip-flops, one pair of Nikes uh, that I bought in high school, um, two pairs of cut-off shorts, and my cat, and my car. Uh, and I drove from New York to Albuquerque, which is uh, where I ended up buying a house and all of that. Um, that's where I live right now. Uh, don't ask me why I live here, because I don't know that I could really tell you, but I do. This is where I am. Um, I just, I'm not really going to show you all of these, but um, this new collection I feel like there's even more of a difference between, uh, like, Factory New and, uh, what is it, Battle Scarred, um, because of, like, the new, newly paid attention to, like, shininess of the textures and, uh, the added care, I think. Like, if you look at, and part of it is just, like, the aesthetic, like, this is supposed to be a very kind of, um, woodsy, thing that you'd carry in the woods. Although I don't know that anyone would ever go hunting with a scattergun. <laughs> like, that's not a thing that people do. Um, or if you do, you probably shouldn't plan on keeping a trophy or eating the meat. Um, but uh, yeah, it's kind of more of like a country aesthetic. So I understand that it's kind of flatter um, and more, more cartoonish maybe. Uh, but this, these newer weapons um, are skinned a lot more deftly and this is not the best example and they're also very um, vivid and bright so and you can see that uh, you can't see my cursor but you know um, the grip the trigger and uh, the base of the barrel uh, are meant to be metal um, but not as metal as Australian because then people with Australian weapons would get angry and feel less special Oh, to go back to this, I remember, like, I'm a very slow learner, and I've joked about this with a lot of people, that um, I'm probably going to learn to market garden when I'm about 50 years old, but I remember, like, what, like, several months into playing, just spamming rocket jumper rockets at someone and wondering why they weren't dying. So, um, the orange things don't hurt people. So don't waste your ammo. Um, I have a couple of the sniper rifles. Uh, like in almost every video or comment I've ever made about this game, um, I'm complaining both about being a bad sniper and about being sniped. And it's like half joking and I really respect people who have the, um, it's shiny, uh, that have the, clarity of mind and steadiness of hand to be a good sniper um and i've landed like enough headshots that i don't feel terrible about myself but um i also don't need six sniper rifles in addition to like these guys um which sort of like brings me back to the fact that um I, i'm trying to lead a very minimal life materialistically materially um but this sort of introduces that whole aspect of um, collecting and buying skins for like your heroes that a lot of the MOBAs and MMORPGs and all those other games allow you to do and monetize hugely. Um, and kind of like in my eyes has always cheapened um, the game in comparison to something like this, which is one of the only free to play games that is not pay to win. I mean, you can go out there and play for years with just your stock weapons and dropped weapons um, and never uncrate anything or buy anything from the market or the store, and you can probably still wreck 
Uh, so, I mean, that's like something that I really respect. But now, um, you can just buy pretty skins for all your stuff, and I have, and I don't feel bad about the spy knives because the backstab is probably the number one uh, most satisfying and uh, just, I don't know, it's just, it's a really gratifying moment when you land a good solid backstab, and it's so quick, and like a lot of um, the sound animation pairs um, in this game of killing and dying, uh, it's very visceral. Even though that's probably not at all what it's like to get backstabbed um, with such a small butterfly knife in real life, it would probably just lodge into the space between, um, what are they called? Like the opposite of your collar, your shoulder bones. Is that what they're called? Shoulder bones. Um, and just you'd bleed slowly and uh, maybe it would hit something in your spinal column and, and you'd have a hard time moving and you'd slowly bleed out or probably have time to call 911 once, once he took off. Um, but in this game, there are a lot of uh, like death sequences and weapon sounds and animations that even though they don't correspond to anything in the real world, they, they feel very physical. Um, and I haven't shot a lot of guns in my life, but I've shot guns. And um, I tried out, uh, what is it, Call of Duty Black Ops 2 um, a couple months ago and tried to get back into it a few times, but I was really turned off by the fact that uh, my, my protagonist, whoever I was playing, um, number one, seemed to not take damage from a, like a, a huge horde of people all aiming at me, um, but also that I was hanging off the side of like a convoy, like a convoy of trucks. I was hanging off the side of one of the trucks, um, scoping and aiming through, uh, I guess, a sniper rifle, um, but like a semi-automatic semi -automatic sniper rifle. I don't really know. I was zoomed in. Um, trying to shoot at these like African children and it really felt like I was shooting nothing with nothing. Um, it also felt just kind of buttery like um, I don't know for being a game that's much more rooted in the accuracy of weapon models um, sort of in the vein of like uh, racing games uh, really stressing the fact that they have these real life um, concept cars or luxury cars that you can race uh, or like train hobbyists having perfectly scaled uh, models of real trains like a lot of these uh, shoot 'em ups really focus on sort of the realism and uh, specificity of their weapon choices but somehow like always have less flexible of a loadout system um, and always just feel like I'm not shooting um, and uh, like the force in nature in this game which I never touched until about a month ago um, which is like my new favorite thing despite the fact that it has like a two bullet clip size um, has such a satisfying and sharp sound and kickback and you can see how it knocks back your opponent as well um, to the point that you can easily cause environmental damage to your enemy uh, simply by firing at them. Um, and being able to see like the path of your head scan weapons bullets, like you can see that three by three grid if you ever shoot at a wall. Um, it helps you kind of understand that there are very rigid physics in place for such a silly world in a silly environment, um, they take a lot of care in kind of maintaining consistency and their own brand of realism that once you're in that world um, and paying attention to only that world and not, you know, comparing it to, well, that doesn't look like an AK-47 or whatever, and just accept that a scattergun is a scattergun and that a minigun is a minigun and that one minigun looks like a dragon and shits out fire, uh, once you can, like, accept that, the universe of like weapons and, and, and combat in TF2 I think is one of the most um, engrossing and easy to uh, get into. But um, tangentially related to the introduction of reskins, hold on, 
I think I should stick another cigarette in my mouth, don't you? Um, which kind of, in my mind, sort of brings it a step down closer to what I see as like extremely commercialized and very derivative games that all look the same to me. Um, uh, the common theme, and they like call them heroes, you can like buy new heroes or buy skins for your heroes, um, is like the idea of heroes itself is like super repellent. It's it's just a really big turnoff and I think it's like one of two reasons why I almost exclusively play TF2. Sometimes I play like the Bioshock franchise, sometimes I'll play like, um, like Fez or something, you know, that's not an FPS. Um, but the reason that I really can't get into stuff like League of Legends um, or World of Warcraft or going way back to when um, I tried out like my first Final Fantasy demo on original PlayStation, um, I was just like so immediately turned off by the fact that they're basically like these escapist fantasies where you can pretend that you are them and everybody who's good is a hero or an underdog who becomes a hero or an anti-hero who's really just a hero that kind of like does shitty stuff sometimes but it's all like based around this idea of um being a superior mortal um and having the right ethics and um it's like completely an objective thing in the world of that game and um it's basically just about like self-aggrandizement um and kind of, uh, I think they call them Mary Sue's, like in, in fan fiction, where essentially a character is created for the sole purpose of being able to visualize yourself or insert yourself in that position. Um, and I think that's kind of gross. Uh, and like not why I play games, at least. Um, and uh, it just kind of reminds me of that, being able to buy a million skins is the same thing just I don't, I don't know there's some connection there um i just i lost it i'll come back to it or i won't um you can see that like i have a ton of uh halloween stuff and that is uh me making use of where do you go this guy um which was the halloween update that came between gunmetal and the smith smith update that we're in the middle of now um, 10,000 souls collected during which time I achieved absolutely nothing in my real life uh, of note but um, it had this uh, function where you could trade in three particular items um, and get a randomized Halloween item um, from past Scream Fortress events and uh, it had to be like a special quality of item and most vintage items were not allowed but i found out that i could get vintage sandman sandmans for about like nine to eleven cents so i like transmuted a million of those and ended up with like just some ridiculous stuff and i think it was worth it to like spend 20 30 cents um and i put together like some scrap items that happened to be of a certain quality. Um, it took me like so long to get that. So long. Like I was crying and screaming. Uh, not really, but I was bitching a lot when I was playing that event. Um, telling people to just leave me the fuck alone so I could get that thing that makes you explode. Um, so I thought it would make me a better Dead Ringer spy too. Um, although I don't know if the ragdolls explode as well. Um, What else? Let's look at some other things, I guess. Um, so, like, I run Halloween um, as a forced holiday 24-7 on my server, uh, specifically for this man, Beatman, and his face changes. Um, excuse me. His face changes depending on what he's doing, which is so adorable. And also scary, um, because he makes this, like, little, little, like, pew-pew face when he's, he's punching you, and, 
Uh, I don't know if they change this, but the third punch that he lands on an opponent is a guaranteed critical hit. So I learned this year that... Oh, this month, sorry. I, I've only been playing <laughs> in 2015. Um, I learned this month that you can be punched very hard by a gunslinger engineer, so you should not take him lightly. Mm. So it's number one. Number two is this set of items that turns your soldier into a kind of just like a deranged robot man, and he gets extra lines, which is interesting, um, as does the uh, like the fairy uh, tutu set for the heavy. Like I said, like I don't really like anything for the heavy, and I don't really like the heavy very much. Um, I like the I like the way that he was designed, and I, I like that he counters um, sort of the more like not sexualized, maybe a little sexualized kind of um, ideal male physique that couldn't possibly exist in real life of other brawny characters in um, you know like our RPGs or MOBAs or whatever. I I get them all mixed up, but. Um, like the big strong characters, like the heavy classes in other games, they have like well-defined muscles that um, you would need to take like regular steroids for in real life or just live at the gym. Um, and heavy is actually, uh, he's kind of got like a really comically weird body. His animations are not meant to be taken seriously and that's what I really like about all the characters is that um, they don't have fantastic origin stories, um, they're not heroes, and they don't look elegant all the time. Um, most of the time they look really silly, and they embrace that, the people who make stuff, I guess, community content makers as well as um, the folks that work at uh, Valve or whatever, um, is that they understand that it's more appealing and more relatable and also funnier and newer and more different um, if they don't act like your traditional hero, you know? And I don't know the, like, the lore or the backstory on most of these characters, um, but, uh, you know, like, the scout is just some, like, plebeian from, from like, the Boston uh, area, I think. Um, and I know a million kids that are just like him. Uh, I went to school. Um, a state over from Massachusetts, uh, and we got a ton of them in, in Rhode Island too. Um, just, you know, like a scrappy kid from like a big family. He's probably got a little Portuguese in him, um, you know, and he runs fast and he's, I don't know, he like is really terrible with women, um, but then you, you throw him into combat uh, and you put an actual human player that really understands um, his strengths and weaknesses, and he becomes like an insanely terrifying killing machine. I mean, he can land like th three or four uh, close range uh, shots on a heavy who can't possibly like even turn around fast enough to save himself and and then he's gone like you don't even know that he was there. And that's what's so fantastic about all of these characters is that they can achieve a lot of things um, that aren't even like mechanisms that exist in other games. Uh, except for Overwatch, which pretty much took everything special about TF2 and then made it look Japanese. Um, but yeah, they're... Give me one second. Um, I will be back in just one second. It's here, it's here, it's here, it's here, it's here. Last chance dance, it's here. It, it was a mysterious postal worker who uh, left, I guess it's the webcam, um, on my step and then scurried away faster than I could catch him to say, thanks, bruh. Um, I don't remember what I was saying and I'm sure that's okay. Um... So I was talking about having a problem with one of the characters, and I don't remember which character that was, but the other character that I do 
have sort of a problem with in the way that he's designed and portrayed is the medic and I love the medic and I love playing medic to the point that I would say that I like 75% main medic um, and he's the only guy that I've ever bought um, a fancy Australian weapon for uh, does that make it show up? Yes, I bought him a Blutsauger, which I don't even really use that much, but um, I thought it went really nicely with his adult swim hat. Um, and I don't know, it's just, he's a special dude. Um, he It takes some, some skill to play him right, and I'm not there yet, but um, I'm getting there and I, I, I just love playing him. But I feel like he's modeled heavily after um, Sort of like the angel, what is it, the angel of death, kind of like Nazi era, uh, <laughs> like overzealous, um, kind of masochistic, no, sadistic. Um, I get those two mixed up because I feel like I'm a little bit of both. Um, that sadistic, overly cheerful, uh, sort of like concentration camp doctor that you know vivisected live humans or um injected one twin out of a set of twins with syphilis like that kind of stuff like not to get to not to get too serious about it but that's essentially like absolutely the archetype that they're drawing from on him and like listen to all of his voice lines um some of his taunts like it's all based on exactly that character um just fictionalized and that makes me kind of just feel weird, you know, like sort of like the deranged doctor that likes doing terrible things to people. Um, and this is the last thing I'll say about it, but uh, pretty much an identical scenario happened. Um, I think they were called Unit 731. Um, but when the Japanese occupation and attempted takeover of the entire world was going on, um, a lot of my... Uh, not even ancestors, like just a couple generations above me, um, either knew or were somehow related to um, all of the like semi-secret um, human experiments that were done on uh, people in uh, occupied Japanese occupied territories. Um, and and the worst thing is that when all of that was over, Japan struck a deal with America to kind of sweep it under the rug. Um, and get a pardon for some of the war crimes uh, in exchange for the information that was gathered out of uh, doing things like um, allowing one arm to get frostbitten and then seeing how quickly gangrene set in, uh, cutting multiple people open while they were alive, stuff like that. So, um, and all of these, if you like watch videos and clips of uh, some of the survivors, uh, both of the oppressors and, and, and the people that were in these camps, um, there was always sort of this like self-delusion and cheeriness. Um, like I think it was Mengele or someone who was known for being like so good with children, he'd always bring the sweets, um, and then he was just this absolute deranged monster. Uh, same goes for like a lot of the Japanese um, uh, physicians, physicians? Doctors. Um, who carried this stuff out on uh, my people and other people uh, and I feel like that's like really obviously what this dude is modeled after and that kind of creeps me out from time to time but then it's like super fun just quick fixing a scout and I forget about it and I buy him a golden gun and I play him a lot and I like him so I'm not gonna talk about human vivisection anymore um, Oh, I don't know. Um, really, I don't know what more there is to say, uh, except that this hat for my medic is great. Um, like this, the nun head, and then there's like the angel of mercy or whatever. He's got wings. Like all of those are phrases that relate to uh, euphemistic kind of names that were given to these um, doctors of death. Oh, I just told you I'd stop talking about it, didn't I? Um, Let's see. I'm just now learning um, how the three of these guys work, the three screens. Um, I never really paid attention to anything except for the fact that the tide turner let me change direction um, mid-charge, and that was it. Um, oh, and that you could bash people in with the shield itself. 
but I had never paid attention to any of like the other stats, um, so I have no opinion on whatever new changes other people have been bitching about. Um, so ignorance is bliss. Um, Birkenstocks are very comfortable, and I have no shame in wearing them during the summer. And I think that's it. Um, I mean, it's just more about gameplay and just general ideas and concepts that are brought forth in the game um, uh, is what I wanted to talk about more so than the items themselves. Um, I actually really hate uh, words like haul or unboxing, uh, which you can find a ton of videos on YouTube, which is basically just people like showing you that they paid for shit and got cool shit. Um, and that's not really what my intention was with this. It's just that um, I liked what I ended up talking about in that other test video that I deleted. Um, so I just thought I'd do it again, um, uh, just so I could have it. Uh, it just it reminded me a lot of other related things, things I like about the game, um, things that make this game, which is from 2007, which I didn't get into until almost 10 years after the fact. Um, why it feels uh, newer and better and more interesting and still completely unique um, after just a barrage of expensive like AAA um, games have been released uh, over those last eight, uh, eight or nine years. Um, and I think is the fact that there is a sense of humor involved. Um, Oh, and I just wanted to say that like I'm I'm such a degreaser person, and the only skinned uh, flamethrowers you can get are the original flamethrower. So it's actually just because um, I feel bad not using these things that I paid fifty cents for. Um, I've been using the original flamethrower, and it's actually reminding me to kind of try out uh, the different um, pyro primaries again, um, and maybe go back to basics. Uh, and if I really want to change things up, use the Phlogistonator, which was always one of my least favorite weapons and is now absolutely my least favorite <laughs> weapon uh, because of the things that have been done to it, which I'm just not going to complain about anymore because I think I spent about like a sum total of at least an hour um, just crying about how OP it is now. Um, but I never really got the hang of uh, handling like the crits, like delivering the mini crits or whatever uh, with the back burner. Um, and then I ended up with this guy. <laughs> I can't really show you. It's the back burner with like just this massive frame of antler looking things covered in uh, more Christmas lights. Uh, so I can pair that with this uh, <laughs> object and have a Merry Christmas. Um, but the Phlogistonator, the Pomsen, the Righteous Bison, the Man Melter, uh, what else is there? All those like space agey ones. Um, I would say the Shooting Star, but it actually, it just, it's different animations. It works exactly the same as the Machina. Um, so that one doesn't count, but all of these like kind of space items uh, I feel are inferior, except inferior if you um, are not really aware of the physics of how they work. like. Um, I watched an entire cart, like pretty much the entire team on a payload, get decimated by just a couple of Righteous Bison shots and um, a crits charge, uh, and that was really satisfying, but um, otherwise I feel like they just deploy, uh, oh and the Cow Mangler, they just deploy in a way that um, isn't interesting to me. Um, uh, they seem to like hit in a way that doesn't make sense. Um, there's a delay that kind of feels, uh, I don't know, um, like when there's a delay when you're reloading a clip on a gun, um, like on the Force of Nature, like you understand what's happening, but why Why is it happening here? Um, I just don't really use these at all. The only time I would use the man mounter is so that I can extinguish teammates if I'm using the flag, but that's why I don't use the flag is because um, I consider it to be kind of a selfish weapon in that, uh, in, se in several ways, um, and also leaves you vulnerable to several things. Uh, number one is that 
if I'm having a medic pocket me, uh, which happens pretty frequently um, when I'm playing on public servers, uh, there's usually like one medic that likes to uh, follow me around because um, I'm pretty aggressive. Uh, I want to be able to put him out first, like even before saving me, I want to put him out first. And um, I'm not going to wait for for the man melter to recharge. Uh, I just want to blast him and save him because he's my doc, he's my med, and uh, he's keeping me alive, so I got to keep him alive. And when I medic pyros and they don't put me out, I get real fucking pissed. So that's one reason I do not like the flag. Uh, the second reason is that if you have a medic on you um, and you're going around wrecking shit and you fill up your oomph meter and then you stop in the middle of somewhere and now it's even easier and even more dangerous for the medic, um, you are immobilized while you perform your little uh, taunt that fills up your meter, which also recharges your health. So for like a good like three seconds, your medic is in danger, is not really able to move. I mean, he could leave you, but most medics kind of just don't, you know, want to stray too far from the people they're healing unless they're like under whatever HP limit they set for themselves, um, like a hundred. I tend to run away when I'm like 75 or a hundred. Um, but yeah, like he's, he's on you, he's healing you, and then you stop and you heal yourself, uh, and you're kind of in the middle of everything and you'll be fine because you will have a crazy amount of crits and firepower um, and you know you can go get him and do it all uh, and then your medic is just hanging out there so good on you medic if you pocket a flug pyro um, but I'm going to stick with traditional flamethrowers I think um, Minus the Rainblower, because that's just a ridiculous instrument, even for TF2. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. I really have nothing more to say about these items themselves. I could talk about the game and its mechanics and what makes it so wonderful forever, but I won't because I keep seeing like one or two people come back to the stream and then very quickly disappear <laughs> because I'm still talking about just shit in my backpack. Um, and I also want to go play, and I also haven't eaten breakfast yet, um, and I want to be able to, like, smoke a cigarette without feeling weird about it, because um, you guys can hear me sucking on my stogie, so, uh, this is the 